I finally decide to pull back the covers to get comfy. And I pull back the covers and there is literal poop in my bed. Poop. Anyway, I cannot jerk. And all the videos on TikTok that are like, it's just skipping backwards. That's what I thought too. <laughs> and uh, and it doesn't look good when I do it. And I, I can, teach and you I how can to jerk. skip forward. Okay. We're going to have to do it at some we'll point. Have because... a, we'll have a jerking lesson. <laughs> <laughs> I obviously need it. Cause I got you. I was struggling. Also, but the I... TikTok sound gorgeous, gorgeous girls love soup. Soup girls are the most popular girls in the chicken coop. I actually haven't heard this sound. <laughs> it is all over my for you page, and I say it all the time. Like all of my friends who've hung out with me in the past week, that's in the middle of like them. They could be like telling me their life story, and I in the middle of them, I just be like, "Gorgeous, gorgeous girls love soup." <laughs> I can't get it out of my head. <laughs> You'll have to send me a video with it in it because I just have, if you're going to let me down, let me down, let me You have Adele's backup dancers. Yeah. I love that. Oh, no. I will. It's in my liked videos. I'm pretty sure the last video I liked on TikTok was a gorgeous, gorgeous girl sound. So you have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all about gorgeous yes. girls liking soup. Yeah, I guess gorgeous, gorgeous girls love soup. Uh, soup girls are the most popular girls in a chicken soup. I love you, you love me, we love soup, la da da Soup yeah! queens are soup fiends. It just keeps going on. And I think it's so funny. That's hilarious. And nobody else, none of my friends, no, all my friends are like, please stop saying it. And I'm like, no. No, never. <laughs> You're no, just it's jealous because like... I'm a gorgeous, gorgeous girl who loves soup. <laughs> Got him. Boom. Roasted. <laughs> it's like when we were in Wisconsin. Oh my god, I forgot my journal. I want to oh. have it. It's just it's just right next door. I don't Sorry, know I have to fix my boob too. <laughs> okay. Wait, look. Oh, I remember what I was saying. Um, when we were in Wisconsin and uh, I kept going, five whoppers. <laughs> and five yeah. more whoppers. That is so funny. I think it's hilarious. Me too. It was a receipt. And my boob, if anyone was wondering. <laughs> Why did you have a receipt in your boob? Work can get a little crazy, and sometimes <laughs> you gotta shove a receipt in your boob. <laughs> okay, right. Totally. I agree. Hi, guys! Hey, guys! Welcome Hi. back. Oh, hey, welcome back. <laughs> You are Victoria. I am Victoria. <laughs> and and that's Elizabeth. <laughs> we are the queens. <laughs> we, we are the queens. And that's our intro now. So yep. we almost got so deep into conversation before this happened, we forgot to introduce ourselves. So And so we we pressed record so you guys could hear what we were talking about. Because I was like, oh my god, we're hilarious. Why are we not recording yeah. this? <laughs> So, lucky you. <laughs> lucky you. And lucky for our watchers on YouTube, you get to see my bra. <laughs> it's true. It's true. This is true. She said something so before a... we started recording, and it's like, which one of us are you? Are you this, a white, a plain white wall gal? <laughs> Where are you, Liz? <laughs> In a bathroom. <laughs> In a bathroom with green walls, a bra hanging off one of the drawers, and donut pajamas. Yeah. I we think both. I know who I am. <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> I think I know who I am, too. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, that's just my bra, and I do that with all my bras when I take them off to go in the shower. I just hang them on the closest drawer so they won't be sitting on the floor, you know? Yeah. That's what you gotta do. Yeah. Nothing yeah, wrong and with that's, it. And there's my toilet paper. It, very important also. So. <laughs> yep. Anyway, <laughs> welcome back to another episode of, like, The Queen's. This one's We're very happy. chaotic. You guys are here. This is very chaotic. 
because I'm tired again. Me too. And Liz is tired too. So here we, we go. have so much to go over today. Yeah, we we have stories upon stories upon confessions that you guys heard a little sneak peek of last week. Yeah, confession from a listener. So we're gonna get on with it. We're gonna get on to our I think we're gonna start with Wisconsin. Are we gonna start with Wisconsin or are we gonna update them on some things? Oh. <laughs> Totally forgot we had to update you guys on some things. Yeah, I got some major updates to tell you. All right, then maybe you should go first because I don't... Well, I guess I'll go. I don't think I have any okay, major updates. I'm still just working. I'm selling. Mm-hmm. I'm working at the Wishing Tree and and literally that's it. I had a performance this past week, which was fun. I sang, sang a little ditty. That is fun. You did really good. Thank you. Thank you. I liked it a lot. It was fun. And that's it. That's all I've been doing is singing and working at a wishing tree. That's all the updates okay. for me. But Amazing. Liz, I want to hear about yours. Okay, I'll give you the minor update first. Okay. As our listeners know, I constantly hit on men from TikTok. I slide into their DMs. I slid into a TikTok semi-famous guy's DMs on Instagram, who I found out lives out in LA, like most tiktokers do but he's also an actor and i messaged him and i was like hey just so you know i'm moving to la in january do with this information as you like and he liked Mm -hmm. my message (laughs) Uh uh-huh oh my goodness okay this is good this is good this (laughs) famous actor slash tiktoker liked my message about me moving out there that's iconic. I can't wait. Thank you. I so can show you, you made pictures the decision? Of I'm FaceTiming with a girl on Wednesday about living with her. Okay. That's I'll let exciting. you know. I'll let you know. I know. That's exciting. I hope it works out for you. Me too. We're trying to plan a time because of the three hour time difference and all. But like I have good feelings about her. So I just really hope these good feelings are true. Yeah. Are you yeah. ready for the major update? Uh, yeah, as ready as I'll ever be. I'm kind of nervous. I'm really nervous. Why am I nervous? Okay, um, I first need to talk to you. I need to tell, I've mentioned it a little bit to our listeners, and I've talked to you about it before, but I'm going to tell the story of the, I need to go to my list. You have to keep a list, you guys, otherwise you forget, of which guy this was who I went out with. Okay. He is the third guy I went out with after um, my relationship ended, okay? okay? I He's the one who I, the first guy who I genuinely really liked after um, my boyfriend and I broke up. And we went, he lived in, or he lives in Greenville, South Carolina, and we, which is a couple hours away, and we met in the middle for a date. And it was one of the best dates, like one of my favorite dates. We had so much fun. Mm-hmm. Like we sat there even longer, ordered more drinks just so we could hang out and talk more. Yeah. And we talked about other things we wanted to do with each other, other dates. We talked for weeks afterwards. Weeks. Like we it was a it was a thing. Like it lasted at least a month, okay? He yeah. never took me out on a second date. And like I understand. I lived a couple hours away. It's hard to make that happen. But I was out at a bar for Cinco de Mayo, and this was the last time I heard from him. He was driving to Michigan, and he wanted to talk to me on the phone, just, like, so he could have someone to talk to while driving. I was like, yeah, I'll call you when I leave the bar. I didn't leave Mm -hmm. the bar until, like, 2 or 3 in the morning, and um, I tried calling him. He didn't pick up, and he never talked to me again. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, I talked about him on our ghosting episode. Yeah. From back in October about how he's the guy who breadcrumbed me. How, like, he talked to me for, like, weeks afterward but never took me out on a date. And, like, conversations slowly started dying out. And then we were supposed to talk on the phone and then he never answered. And then Mm -hmm. never tried calling me back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I moved out to Asheville, North Carolina, which happens to be really close to Greenville. And I actually thought about him when I moved out here. I was like, oh, I wonder what... 
um, Mr. Retired by 35 is doing, because that's what he's doing. He plans on retiring by 35 with his business. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's amazing. Um, I'm like, I wonder what he's doing. Like, I, I just, like, briefly thought about him. Wasn't going to message him or anything. Like, we've had no communication for six months, seven yeah. months. I was on another dating app. We matched on Hinge, but this is another one, and I have my proximity to less than 50 miles, and he popped up on it. And I swiped right because I was really into him. He also swiped right on me. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we matched, like not even five minutes later, he messaged me, and he's like, hey, Elizabeth. And I'm like, oh, hey, stranger, have you been missing me? And... (laughs) He's like, now that I see you on here, like, yeah, I have. And um, we've started texting again, and we're going out on a second date. That is (laughs) crazy. That's good, though. That's a good thing. Yeah, and I'm totally going to call him out on ghosting me, and I'm going to ask him why. Yeah, and I've already casually brought it up. Like, I'm like, do you still have my number? He's like, 1185. (laughs) I probably shouldn't say my number out. (laughs) <laughs> everybody go text her <laughs> yep you got a couple digits in my number <laughs> he's like blah 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 right and I'm like yep and so he texted me and I was like how was that trip to Michigan <laughs> and he was like that's it's actually kind of terrible thank you that's oh, actually yeah. kind of terrible oh my gosh well this is good one, because Mr. Retire by 35, come on, money. Come on, plan. <laughs> um, secondly, you liked him, so I guess it's good, I, too. I liked him a lot. He hurt my feelings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was a thing. Like, it was like a month, month and a half kind of thing we had going. And I wanted to see this through with him. I wanted to go on more dates. I wanted to figure out if we could make it work or not. And yeah. now that I live an, an hour, less than an hour away from him, we're meeting up again. We have we're a day. Make it happen. Yeah. We have a day. We have a time plan. And now we're figuring out what to do. And I'm going to find out why he ghosted me. <laughs> so we're going to get an update on that soon, too. Yeah. Because we I'm talked so about excited. it in the... Me too. We talked about it in the ghosting episode, and now yeah. we get an answer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we get an update answer. everybody. Well, that's really exciting. I'm glad. I'm super this excited. Is kind of coming together. Mm-hmm. I Wish thought I about him for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you, it will happen. It'll happen when you're less yeah. busy. It's true. Maybe in the I'm new year. Really I'm really, really excited. Like, I like this guy a lot, and he's yeah. successful. He's successful. He's only a little bit older than me. He's only two years older than me, and he's funny, and I drunk FaceTimed him, and I drunk Snapchatted him, and he still liked me afterwards and wants to go on a second date with me, so. <laughs> Perfect. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's very exciting. I am happy for you. Thank Happy you. that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Seven months later, like, isn't that crazy? That's crazy how it's, like, almost a year, kind it's of. It's almost a year, and I'm going on a second date almost a year later with him. Dang. Well, I, I guess he was still thinking about He remembered you, which is always a good sign. <laughs> it is. I mean, he kept telling me over and over again on our date, like, oh, my gosh, I wish you lived closer. Like, I wish the distance wasn't a thing. And so I under, I felt like on our first date that it was going to be a problem that we lived a couple hours away from each other. Yeah. And that wasn't something, like, he wanted to do, and I get that. But now that we're close and we're going to be close for a little while longer. Yeah, a few more weeks. We get the chance to get to know each other better. Explore more. Yeah. 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 Exciting. Definitely <laughs> keep you. me updated on all of that. I will. Because I want to know. It'll be happening in two days. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. I know. Those are the purpose. I love that. Well, he's busy. He's running a business and it's the only time he can do this week. Yeah. I understand. He, he's retiring by 35. So he's got, <laughs> he's got moves to make. So he's got to make money moves. <laughs> yeah. I understand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that. Oh, 
Let me tell you one more thing about him that I like. He ordered us an appetizer on the first date and multiple drinks and let me take the appetizer home in a box. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's sweet. Yeah. He gave me lots of food. <laughs> and we love to eat. <laughs> we do. It doesn't take much to make me happy. Just give me some spinach dip. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Thank you. Green flag. That's a green flag. Green flag. Um, so should we do Wisconsin now? Probably. <laughs> okay. So I wrote about uh, July 2nd. Victoria didn't. So I'm going to read you what happened to me on July 2nd. And then Victoria's going to start with July 3rd. Because, y'all, you are in for a story. Okay. In for a story. Okay. <laughs> I love how I start this. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. 7221. I feel like a living legend. <laughs> As you should. <laughs> we first started the night basically singing karaoke in the restaurant. There was a live band playing outside at the same time. It was the exact same band from Ted's that we saw with the crazy crotch grabbing lady. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, we were packing up our stuff when I heard them starting to play Any Way You Want It. I love that song so much, so I had to go dance. No one was dancing to this hype song, so what do I do? I dance in front of every single person there uh, who's watching the live band. This hippie grandma with long pink hair comes up to me with these clappers and hands them to me. I start dancing and clapping, trying to get everyone hyped up. The hippie grandma started dancing with me and slapped my butt with a tambourine. <laughs> I shook my ass in front of an audience while an old freaking lady slapped it with a tambourine. One of the best moments of my life. <laughs> Victoria oh, and I went back to our... Thank you. <laughs> Victoria and I went back to our room and changed. Then we danced outside with the band until they packed up at 9 p.m. We hung out with Jacob and Sam for a little bit before heading to Fat Bob's. Nothing too exciting happened, but the bar was packed with a ton of people. This married man started chatting us up. He didn't have a ring on. We thought he was single. His wife was not happy that he was talking to us. <laughs> Do you remember that now? I actually, everything's coming back to me now. Yep, yeah, this night? Yeah. Uh-huh. We tried getting him to introduce us to his wife, but it was just an awkward situation. When we yeah. walked over there, she wouldn't even speak to us. LOL. Victoria and I did lay in bed eating pizza and chips and salsa while dying <laughs> laughing. <laughs> so a great end to a fun night. I remember that. I remember all this vividly. And I also, I'm going to expose you just oh, a gosh. little bit. Because I remember... <laughs> That like that night we we both got changed and we went out and danced with this band after we were done performing for the night, and Liz was texting with this guy that she just matched with on a dating app, and she was trying to get this guy to come to the Fat Bob's and bring a <gasps> friend for me because good friend energy, this. and like there was for some reason this night there was no connection in the bar. And we were sitting there, and Liz was like, I can't text this guy. And I was like, no. And that's why we stayed so long at Fat Bob's, because we were trying to get this guy to bring a friend over to hang out with us that night. But he's a guy who I actually ended up going out on a date with. Yeah, in Eau Claire. Yeah. Should yeah. I tell the people how much older he was than me? Sure. Um, This man was, was 14. 14 years older than me. 14 years older. But he was hot. I support that. He was a very attractive man. He was. He was. And he had big muscles and nice hair. He owned a couple businesses and houses. He could take care of me. I don't think 14 years is too bad. <laughs> I'm not just saying that. <laughs> because I think the oldest guy I hooked up with is... 16 years older than me. <laughs> 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 we like older men. Ha ha ha. So, yeah. About that. <laughs> and he was, like, smart and confident and yeah. knew what he wanted. And, like, 
I appreciate his honesty with what he wanted. Like, he wanted the wife. He wanted the children. And I just, I just wanted to hang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. He was nice. I got, I got the pleasure of meeting this man. Yeah, she got to meet him. We went to the mall. And he was sweet. Yeah, Victoria and Madison were walking around while I had <laughs> coffee with this guy. Yeah, it was very, it was a very last minute thing. Yeah. But yeah, I do remember July 2nd now. I remember it vividly. It was a fun night. And I have to talk about the pizza and the chips and salsa. So yes. our, com- our common room <laughs> is on the complete opposite side of our hotel room. So we are walking with our hair wrapped in our little ha- head wraps and our pajamas completely drunk, giggling down the, the resort, the hotel, to our common room to get our pizza and chips and salsa. And we're running back going like, <laughs> Yeah, we looked crazy. We looked crazy. Like I was in, I wasn't even wearing shoes. You were. I, wa- I was wearing like socks and my pajamas and my hair, my hair was wrapped. Liz was, Liz wore slippers at least. And we just were walking down with a jar of salsa, with a jar of salsa, just acting like we owned the hotel. I and mean, in a way, we did. <laughs> we did. We did. And like, exactly. I think, I think Aiden was working at the front desk, and we walked King. by him like blasted, like, "What's up, Aiden?" Um, Aiden, I, you're not listening to this, but I really wish you were. I miss um, you, Aiden. I miss the free ice cream we conned out of you. <laughs> yes. Thank you for being so young and naive. <laughs> We'll do a quick little story time on Aiden. He was a guy, guy who worked at the front desk, and he just was a 10 out of 10 time. He, he was. was. We liked One of the employees who liked us, <laughs> who, like, didn't hate us running around at yep. past midnight, and he also gave us free ice cream. He did. Because he was supposed to? Probably not. No, he but... wasn't allowed. <laughs> But we did it. We got the free ice cream out of him. (laughs) He was like 15, 16, and like such a nice, cute little kid. (laughs) It's true. But yeah, July 2nd. What what a night. I can't believe I didn't write about any of that. Because I definitely, we sang, and I definitely went out and danced. That's the thing with me and Liz. Hmm? I I was going to say, we sang What's Up, too, with the band outside. With the girl. Some of the band members of uh, Bear Creek were eating dinner and they heard us doing our songs that night. So when we went outside and we were dancing, they were like, we have some singers out here. And then they let us sing into their microphone. And I was like, cool. It was so fun. It was fun. And we were also the only ones dancing at some points. Which doesn't ever stop us. because (laughs) That happens to me and Liz a lot, actually. (laughs) The only people on the dance floor. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But that's the way to do it. Yeah, I love it. (laughs) All right. I am so excited for them to hear about Poopgate. Poopgate. What a Mm -hmm. title already, guys. This Mm -hmm. is July 3rd, the very next day. The Um, next day. I'm just going to pull out my journal now and I'm just going to start going. The title is called Poopgate. So just be prepared. July 3rd. Today has been very eventful, to say the least. We had a very good drive and performance to Belvedere, and we met Dale. Oh, God. (laughs) Who was very creepy, and the first words out of his mouth were, Wow, you brought the pretty ones out here, which just (laughs) set the bar so high. Um, I said he also talked at a volume of negative two, so there was a point where he was telling us a story. (laughs) that's what he sounded that's, like that's how he talked guys and she's not exaggerating that nope so i wrote there was one part where he's telling us a story and we all all three of us were like hmm? we were like yeah yeah i'm sure could not understand a word he was saying did not know what was going on um and then i said we had a really good show we went to applebee's with joe afterwards and he um he said he would buy us anything we wanted, so we got dinner out of him. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Um, okay, I said our director's drink didn't come till he finished his meal, so that was an interesting experience, to say the least. 
our service was really bad at that Applebee's that night. <laughs> but it was. Okay. I said, but sadly, the night was still young with crazy times. We go back to the hotel and start to settle down. It's past midnight at this point, and Liz is all settled down, about to fall asleep. I finally decide to pull back the covers to get comfy, and I pull back the covers, and there is literal poop in my bed. (laughs) It's streaked all over the sheet, and I soon realize it's all up the comforter that I am Mm -hmm. holding. (laughs) I'm disgusted and I immediately poke at Liz and I wake her up and I'm like, Liz, there's poop in my bed. (laughs) And like, she's about to go to (laughs) sleep. And I was like, there's poop in my bed. And she, and (laughs) I wrote, and she was just as in fact, even more upset than I was. (laughs) (laughs) I truly was. (laughs) So Liz, Leans down and smells it, confirms that it's poop, <laughs> grabs her phone, puts on her slippers, and says, I'll handle this. And I followed her right on down to the lobby, and we confront this man. We both start off very nice. We tell him we have a problem and that there's poop in our bed. This man looks at us like we are stupid and proceeds to tell us that there is, in fact, no poop in my bed. He um, did. And that this man verbatim said... It's probably not poop. It's probably just stained sheets from the hotel's dirty water. And we said, what? (laughs) (laughs) And I said, now even more disgusted than we were before, we just look at each other and Liz goes, I'm getting Joe. She marches up to go grab him. And I'm stuck here with this man who is arguing with me about the poop. And I was, I kept trying to tell him at the counter because I, Liz was like, you need to take a video of it, which was very smart. And I was at the counter with this man and I was like, I have a video of it. Like I have pictures of a video. Is that what you need to see? And he's like, no, 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 there's no poop in your bed. And I was like, okay, well there is. And he was like, well, I don't know what you want me to do because we don't have an empty room and I can't just give you a new room. And I was like, okay, well, (laughs) And I was like, I suggested new sheets or really a new room. And he said, I mean, I guess I might be able to do that. That's Mm. the answer I got. That's the answer I got Mm. is I guess I'll be able to like give you new sheets. Mm. Very frustrated. misogynistic prick. Absolutely. So very frustrated because this man is currently either not believing or just being difficult with me. I'm mad. I don't know what that meant. At this point, Liz is back with Joe, and all Joe did was walk up to the counter and say, what are you going to do about this? And all of a sudden, this little man behind the counter has an empty room available. It's amazing that what a man... It's amazing what a man can get and a woman can't. Yeah. I literally... I I, hate men. Pretty much, I'm going off script here, but, like, I just have to tell the story with this rage. Joe comes down in... (laughs) in his pajamas leans his elbow on the counter he's like what are we gonna do about this and this man acted like like I, we weren't even there the whole time he was like yeah. oh yeah i have a new room ready for them right now but he would he was calling us liars or there was poop in your bed i was like do you want to go back to 30 seconds ago when you like said that you guess you could give me new sheets anyway so like we get a new room like we get the key He gives us the key and he's like, okay, well, I'm going to have to come look at the poop. And we were like, okay, fine. (laughs) (laughs) So we like follow him up. Well, actually he follows us up and we take him into our room (laughs) and we like bring him to my bed and I'm like, there it is. There's the poop. And he's like, hmm. (laughs) And this is iconic. Liz is iconic this night. (laughs) And Liz goes, smell it. (laughs) She looks at him dead in the eyes and is like, smell it. Smell it. I I was kind of having an iconic weekend. She really was. That, like, that was the best. And then this man does. He leans down. He smells it. And he's like, hmm, yeah, that's definitely something. No, 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 no. We need to back it up. This man did a scratch and sniff. He scratched that poop and smelled it. This was before. Before Liz told him to smell it. He comes up and he's like, hmm. He's literally, his hands are all over this poop. He's touching it. Interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then Liz 
it's iconic, tells him to smell it. He smells it and he's like, yeah, that's something. And Liz is like, yeah, <laughs> something? <laughs> it's poop. <laughs> and I'm dying. I think this is so funny. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. I don't deal with misogyny, and I will slap it in the face, and I was slapping him in the face with all my sarcasm and one-liners. And she was. And Liz said, <laughs> okay, come into the other room, and then we made this man, like, sit, stand there while we pulled, we went into our new room, and me and Liz <laughs> prompted to pull back all of the sheets, and we were, like, examining every corner of the sheets to make sure there wasn't like any stain at all and luckily we were good in our nerve we room were good. we were like we were like okay thank you we're good you can go now he, no he goes will this do like is this good and we're like yeah we guess <laughs> like it's fine and he was literally like is this gonna be okay we were like mm. i guess <laughs> yeah and that that was the night um, that was poop gate i kind of went a little off of my off of my thing but that story okay. just needs I need to tell it with the rage because you cannot forget that night you cannot forget I won't ever forget it and literally for the rest of the summer and every mm-hmm. trip we've taken after Wisconsin when we went to Chicago when we went to Michigan when we went to California we pulled back our sheets we every hotel poop. that me and Liz ever stay in together we pull back <laughs> our sheets and look for poop because we were traumatized yeah. By this experience, I don't even remember the name of the hotel, but it was a was it a no 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 we stayed at La Quinta at another point. Yeah, speaking <laughs> speaking of La Quinta, I need to tell everybody. Oh, that. that's how you say it. <laughs> Thank you for correcting <laughs> that me. This is not my first experience with poop in a hotel. Uh-uh. No, this was my second experience <laughs> because when I was a wee little child. Me and my mom took a weekend trip to Universal Studios in Florida. We got a hotel at a La Quinta. We were like, wow, this is so fun. And we check into the hotel. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go take a shower. I was quickly fooled. I pulled back the curtain to the shower. What is in the bathtub? Poop. And it wasn't just a streak of poop in the bathtub. No, like full on. <laughs> it was a full on poop like turn <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh and we freak out luckily we got a new room but yeah that was my first experience pooping in a hotel of course it would happen to me again because like why yeah well, you were so <laughs> why unlucky. wouldn't it so you were so unlucky and then the next night so we stayed in that hotel that had our poop trauma and then the next <laughs> night literally on july 4th we had a little gig with our group, and then the hotel we were staying at was La Quinta. And I was like, guys. I And I haven't stayed in a La Quinta since. There was poop in the bathtub. So that was my first time <laughs> seeing that. Victoria, I am so sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of really funny, though. <laughs> Are you all ready to hear it from my perspective? <laughs> because I was dealing with Joe. Well, she was dealing with this man. That's true. She has Joe stories. Yep, it's really While I was funny. dealing with this stupid man. All right. 7-3-21. Poopgate. Don't even get me started on this whole fiasco. We were in Marshville <laughs> performing at Belvedere Country Club. Dale, the owner, speaks at a decibel of one. After our show, we went back to our hotel room. I went to get in the shower and said to Victoria, our shower doesn't look very clean. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Important. Mm -hmm. But regardless, I got in. I crawled into bed and started watching TikToks. Victoria hadn't crawled into bed yet. At about 12.15 a.m., she pulled back the covers to get in, and what did she find? A freaking poop streak. (laughs) She told me to get out of bed and to look at what she found. It's true. (laughs) It's true. I looked and smelled it. It was definitely poop. I said to her, I'm taking care of this, and marched downstairs to the front desk. I had to call someone at the front desk, and this man answered. I told him we had a problem with our room and needed to speak to someone. He was like, what's wrong with your room? I said, there's crap in my friend's bed. (laughs) He finally came out of the room next door. Like, he could have heard us talking the entire time. He was was around the corner. He was. He was 10 feet away. (laughs) 
This man started arguing with us, saying there isn't poop in Victoria's bed. Victoria even tried showing him a video of it, and the other spot she found, he refused to watch it. I finally had enough and said, I'm getting Joe. I went upstairs and kept knocking on Joe's door and calling him until he woke up. I told him we have a problem, and he tried inviting me in. I said, no, I need you to come with me. I explained the whole story to him while we were walking to the elevator. He didn't say a single word. He walked up to the front desk, put his arm on the desk, and said, What are you going to do about this? And the man said, I'm getting them a new room right now. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm. And I said, Here, the misogynistic prick refused to give us a new room until a man showed up. Screw the patriarchy. And screw men. <laughs> Correct. This is in my journal. <laughs> He still had to see the poop streak himself, he said. He even tried saying it was the hotel's dirty water, and sometimes the water doesn't get completely filtered. Number one, ew. Number two, that makes things even worse. And number three, more health violations. He went upstairs with us and looked at her bed. He started poking at it and scratching it like it was a scratch and sniff. I told him to smell it. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay. I need to calm myself sometimes. <laughs> it's true. She literally told him to smell it. And the whole time, um, our director, Joe, is standing in the doorway. And he's letting this happen because... He's we, letting me boss this man around. He said, around. women support women. And we said, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Shout out, Joe. <laughs> and I'm standing in the room laughing. Liz is livid. <laughs> I'm livid. <laughs> because I have OCD. I am mentally ill. And the thought of pooping in my bed makes me want to... <laughs> yeah. And, like, I'm not even joking. Like, I struggle with mental illness. And this would... Like, if I was in Victoria's shoes, that man is lucky he is alive. <laughs> that is all I'm saying. It's true. Like, me and Liz both have OCD. Luckily, my OCD is not as, like in that realm of OCD. So, like, <laughs> if it was, though, I probably would have been at that level mm -hmm. that, that Liz was at. I was like, oh, my girl is not sleeping in poop. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, I told him to smell it, and he did, and said, yeah, that's definitely something. Like, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> Actually. I was so mad. But all I said was, yeah. I know. He had us check the room next door to make sure it was clean enough. It was fine, except for the fact we knew the hotel's water was dirty. Mm -hmm. I didn't go to sleep until around 3 a.m. because of the trauma. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And then the last sentence I wrote, freaking men. <laughs> Period. Period. Yeah. Freaking that night, men. it wasn't the best. The night before the 4th of July... And after all of that, I still had to get in the shower. Like, and after knowing that the water wasn't clean, I was like, hmm. Mm. Getting in the shower is kind of the last thing I want to do right now, but looks like I'll do it. Guess we'll have to do it. Oh my gosh, we've, no been we've been recording for 40 minutes. <sighs> oh, we got to wrap this up. <laughs> we got to wrap this up. Okay, so we're going to do the confession really fast. We'll post pictures so you guys will be able to see it. Yes. Um... But this came from a boyfriend of a listener. Fine. They said, A while back, I bet my girlfriend that I knew more about college football than she did and jokingly teased that women only know how to cheer. Although she knew I was joking, that being said, she bet me if my favorite team lost, I had to forever be a performing as a drag queen on the side and cheer for her anytime I saw her at our apartment for her entertainment. And if she lost, she would dress up as a sexy cheerleader of my favorite team, Michigan, whom she also rooted for. Idiotically, I agreed. This was the infamous 2015 game against Sparty. Gets, okay, I guess Sparty. I, I don't know college football. I'm sorry. Case You're in good. point, <laughs> I lost here. And here are some pics of me as a result. Feel free to laugh and show to the world. I'm still a drag queen today. Did professional work in Ohio and Illinois since then, and she still laughs and shows her small circle of friends my pics. Enjoy, queens. She heard of your show and wanted to have it 
uh, at one of your episodes. Thank you so much. And I'm so glad you're a professional drag queen now. Me too. I was, when I first started reading that story, I was like, where is this going to go? And then he said yeah. that you're living your best life and you're doing it professionally now. And I absolutely love that. And, support and you that. made, me too, you made this little bet into a new career. And all I have to say is like, that is amazing. Exactly. And keep and doing sh- it. Yeah. And it shows that you don't have toxic masculinity. Period. There's Period. nothing worse than toxic masculinity, as we just discussed. <laughs> yeah. And if you show me toxic masculinity, I will ruin your ego and life. <laughs> it's true. Nothing infuriates Liz more. No. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> but this was but a really... Yeah. We, we don't want... <laughs> I was going to say this <laughs> is a... This is a really long and fun episode, and because of that, we're going to have to wrap it up, but next time, we'll tell you about our amazing 4th of July, and then if I, which I am, as long as he doesn't bail on me, I'm going to yes. <laughs> More updates on everything. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So, yeah, that was our episode. Fun stories. Stay tuned for 4th of July. Stay tuned for Liz's life update. My update's going to be the same, but stay tuned for that as well. <laughs> You'll hear more all about the excitement next week. <laughs> exactly. With that being said, I'm Victoria. I'm Elizabeth. Like the queen. Like the queen. Like the queen.